Well, friends, we have come to the actual moment of the death of David. And David says this, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. And it just re reminds us that since Genesis 3, when sin came into the world through one man, Adam, um, the world is subject to futility and death is, is just a part of our existence now. David recognizes that. He gives this instruction to his son Solomon, be strong and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God. How are you going to do that? Well, walk in all his ways. Follow all his statutes, his commandments, his, his laws. Keep his testimony. So, in other words, pay very close attention to the word of God. Be faithful to the Lord. He then goes on to give some specific instructions regarding particular people that either, as in the case of Barzillai uh, the Gileadite, deserve uh, great blessing upon him, upon his descendants, or in the case of Joab and Shimei, um, he is counting on the fact that Solomon will be wise in terms of executing judgment against them. And he says this, do not let uh, Joab's gray head go down to Sheol in peace. It sounds very um, vindictive in a way. Uh, he, he says also about Shimei. I remember this was the man who cursed him as he's on his way out of uh, Jerusalem and out of Israel uh, to flee from Absalom. He said, do not hold him guiltless for you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do to him and you shall bring his gray head down with blood to Sheol. So what's this all about? Well, there is this justice that really has not been accomplished. And there's been, a, in a sense, a temporary pardon for these two men that, that in the case of Joab, uh, defied the king. In the case of Shimei, um, he actually was cursing the king. And it seemed like, well, there was no consequence. These men got away with it. Joab uh, murdered two men in a time of peace that uh, really holding over in, uh, things from war, the things that had taken place in war and holding it against these men during a time of peace. And, you know, that that's not right. So there has to be a consequence. So David seems to be aware of that, but also is aware of the fact that Solomon will have not only the wisdom, but the strength to actually bring this about. Again, it sounds to us brutal, but then I guess the final judgment of Almighty God, his His perfect acts of justice, that would sound uh, wrong to us too. But the Lord knows what's right. And so we need to actually, like David said to Solomon, look, pay attention to the word of the Lord. Follow his testimonies, his ways. Well, Solomon actually executes these acts of justice, and he does it in a way that's uh, honoring of the promises that his father David had made and allows each man to sort of fall into their own problems. He does more than that as well. He, he discovers the uh, disloyalty of Adonijah, his brother, and takes action regarding Adonijah. Uh, he removes Abiathar from the priesthood Again, uh, all of this seems to be in accord with this wisdom and power of Solomon. Uh, yes, he does end up putting Joab to death. And another man takes his place as head of the armed forces under Solomon now. And Shimei uh, is discovered to be, as we knew he would be, an, an unfaithful and um, dangerous man, and he also is put to death. And just looking at, at what Solomon says to Shimei, he says, you know in your, own, in your own heart all the harm that you did to David my father. So the Lord will bring back your harm on your own head, but King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. You know, we have a king uh, in Jesus who is far better than Solomon. Solomon was wise. We're going to see more about that in the next chapter. Uh, and Solomon was also powerful. But 
Jesus is both wiser and stronger than Solomon by far, by far. And the kingdom that he is establishing is far better than the peace and settled condition that existed in Israel in the days of Solomon. And it is a privilege for us to follow our great King Jesus. We may not always understand what he does, but we can trust him. Father, thank you for the gift of your Son who reigns on high. He does all things well. His kingdom is so firmly established, and we are counting on him in every way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends.